Hey there, it's Mr. Klein. Welcome you back to wonderful 6-3 Vectors in the Plane. Vectors in the Plane, Vectors in the Plane. I'm sure there's got to be some song about that somewhere. Um, some of you have heard about vectors, some of you have not. Some of you may have heard about this vector. Fantastic vector. Uh, and a squid gun. Uh, also, what we're going to be doing is going to be representing vectors as directed line segments. So that'll be something new. We're going to write the component forms of vectors. Uh, we're going to perform some basic vector operations. So that means we're going to be adding, subtracting, multiplying, um, and then graphing. And then we're also going to write vectors as linear combinations of unit vectors. We're going to find the direction angles of vectors. And we're also going to use vectors to model and solve real life problems. So let's get into our introduction. All right, so uh, a lot of times you're going to have things in geometry and physics such as area, time, temperature, can be represented by a single real number. Other quantities, such as force and velocity, involve both magnitude and direction. That's from Despicable Me. Magnitude and direction. So it actually matters um, the direction that your quantity is going in. It also depends on how, how large it is. That's your magnitude. So to represent such quantity, we use a directed line segment. That is also known as a vector. Okay, this is a vector. <coughs> a directed line segment, PQ, has an initial point P and a terminal point Q. How do you know which one's terminal and which one's initial? Well, notice how your arrow starts at P and then keeps moving to Q. So it's going from P to Q. Magnitude is denoted by the double lines of PQ. It can be found by using a distance formula. Sweet, we know that. Um, a vector can be written as V. Now notice this is like an, a, a bolded V. So V equals PQ. That's one way you can write it. Another way is just writing as PQ with an arrow. And whenever we talk about vectors, we are always denote them in lowercase boldface letters. Not boldface liars. Boldface letters. So let's look at example one here. And what we're going to do is we're going to let U be represented by the directed line segment from P to Q. So we're going to say U is equal to, U is equal to P, Q. That's going to be from P to Q. And we're going to let V be represented by the directed line segment of R to S. So V here. Let me see if this works. Well, this is not working so hot. Uh, there we go. V is going to be equal to R to S. So what uh, we have to find out here for our first example is we're going to need to show that U is equal to V. Now the way you figure that out is by looking at your ordered pairs. So you have a P, you have an X comma Y, for Q, you have an X comma Y. And so the way to find this is we're going to use uh, our X values and we're going to subtract them. So we have to take your terminal minus your initial side. So we're going to say X of Q minus your X that was your P, comma, your Y, your, uh, y and your Q, and then the Y of the P. So let's just plug in our numbers here. We're going to say 1 minus 0. That's your x value. Oops, sorry. This should be 3 minus 0. 3 minus 0. And then we're going to take a 1 minus 0. And when you do that, you're going to get the vector of 3, comma, 1. So now we have to show that u is equal to v. So v should end up being a 3 comma 1 also. But in this case, we're going to take the x of our s minus the x of the r. You're taking the terminal minus the initial, y of your s minus the y of your r. So we plug these values in. So here's your xy, your xy. And we're going to say 5 minus 2 comma 3 minus 2 equals 3 comma 1. So what we did is we just showed that u is going to be equal to v.
because 3 comma 1 is obviously the same as 3 comma 1.